This is going to be just a very brief introduction to buffers, what they are, how they work, but more importantly, how to determine the pH of a buffer if you've had it described what's in it. So just very quickly, a buffer is something which controls pH if you were to add a little bit of acid or a little bit of base to it. And normally if you were to add a little bit of a strong acid or a little bit of a base, strong base to something, its pH changes quite dramatically. But a buffer has both a, an acid and a conjugate base in it, which allows it to minimise the effect of that using the Chatelier's principle. So some typical ones that you, you're likely to meet in past exam papers and so on are these three here. Ethanoic acid being added to ethanoate, often sodium ethanoate. So you'll see here I've got the acid and its conjugate base. It's a weak acid and it's the conjugate base of that weak acid. You could have ammonia being combined with ammonium, say ammonium chloride, um, not ammonium hydroxide though, because that is ammonia. Okay, So an ammonium salt, ammonium sulfate, ammonium uh, chloride, those sorts of things. Again, this is your weak acid. This is your conjugate base. Or if you'd like to think of it the other way, this is your base, weak base, and it's conjugate acid. Here is the one that I'm going to use as my focus for today. The hydrogen carbonate ion, which actually is a base. It's alkaline. But it, it's not just a base. It's what we call a protic. It can gain or lose a hydrogen ion, so therefore it can be thought of as an acid as well. So even though a hydrogen carbonate solution has got a pH above 7, in this case we're going to think of it as an acid because it's going to donate a proton to become yeah. carbonate. So if we put carbonate ions and hydrogen carbonate ions in the same solution, then we might be able to make a buffer. <coughs> so they, what they do is they resist a change in pH. The little delta or triangle there means changing. The acid in this partnership will counter small amounts of a strong base, so an increase in hydroxide ions. The conjugate base in these partnerships will counter the addition of a small amount of a strong acid, so the hydronium ions. You need to be able to show how to make a buffer of a desired pH, given the pKa or Ka for the, for the acid in that partnership. You may need to say how much sorry, that's a bad way to put it, the mass of a salt that needs to be dissolved into a solution. Now in those cases you assume that the constant, sorry, the volume of that solution doesn't change. It's technically not completely true. It would change a little bit. Um, but we assume there's no change in volume, and we'll cover that in, uh, next week. You could have two solutions of known concentration, one of the base, one of the conjugate acid, or conjugate acid and base, um, put together, and they're a bit trickier because you have to uh, allow for the fact there's a new total volume. So actually they, the concentration of the two, the base and the acid, is being reduced. And what we're going to look at today is calculating the pH of a buffer if you're told how it was made. So that's what we're going to do for this one. So you will need your calculator to go along from here, and there's actually quite a few steps in this. These are usually excellence type questions because of the number of steps, not necessarily because of the difficulty. I'm going to give you a few tricks and tips as we go along, hopefully that help make it just a little bit easier. Because generally buffers tend to be a bit of a stumbling block for students. The maths looks too hard so they don't bother revising it and you just accept they're not going to do well in that question. My strong suggestion is don't take that attitude. They're not much harder than calculating the pH of an acid. Okay, so I'll read you through what I've got here. 1.00 grams of anhydrous sodium carbonate is added to 250 mils of 0 0.250 moles per litre sodium hydrogen carbonate, or sodium bicarbonate. I've been given the molar mass of the anhydrous sodium carbonate, and I've been given the pKa of the hydrogen carbonate ion. I've been asked to, to determine the pH. Now, you guys know me well enough. You know the first thing I'm going to do is write an equation but it's what equation am I actually going to write? Well, the big hint for me here is that I was given a pKa. So really, to use that, to make that a piece of useful information, I'm going to write the acid dissociation equation. I'm going to write the acid dissociating because 
I've got a, I can get the Ka pretty easily. It's 10 to the negative 10.3. So let's do that. Let's do our equation first. So the acid in all of this is the one that can donate a hydrogen. So it's sodium hydrogen carbonate. I'm going to ignore the sodium for now. All right. Now, for it to dissociate and act as an acid, I'm either adding a base or adding water. For Ka expressions, it's just adding water. So I'm going to do this one. Acid, so it's going to be hydronium. And look at that, we make the carbonate ion, which is also in this question. Now, Usually, I'd write a Ka expression next. I'm not. I'm going to jot down some notes for myself. And this is my hint to you in exams for how to do these. Start with writing the, the acid dissociation uh, equation. Then, jot down what you know. What do I know about the hydrogen carbonate? I know that it's 1.00 grams. All right. Um, I know that it's Ka is 10 to the power of negative 10.3. So I'll jot that down. Because that's the same iron there. That's all I really know. Or is it? It says that it was added to 250 mils. So I actually know the volume if I'm making a solution, don't I? So I'm going to jot that down as well as a wee reminder, because it could be useful later. You might want to put it in litres at this stage. I'm not going to. What do I know about... Well, water's irrelevant because it's the solution. So I know there's 250 mils of water with these other things dissolved in it. So I can just leave that. But I do... This is becoming really important because of the question. Determine the pH. Hydronium is going to help me determine the pH. So I'm just going to jot that down as a note for myself. Now... Normally, we'd say that these two are equal concentration, wouldn't we? I can't make that assumption with a buffer. This is where things change a little bit. So, I can't say that these are going to be the same. When I'm doing a buffer question, they're not the same. This is the only time where you say, no, these are going to be quite different. All right? So, I'm not going to put anything else there. Okay. I know a fair bit about this too, because I'm told it in the question. And so I've made a mistake there. My one gram is empty over there. That was meant to be 0.25 moles per litre. My apologies. Which is why the volume is so important. Okay. So I'll rewind a bit there. So we know the volume of that. It's 250 mils, we know it's concentration, so we might be able to work something out there that is useful. We know I've got one gram of this. Okay, we also know that it's been dissolved in 250 mils. That could be really useful. What else do we know about the carbonate given in the question? We know that the molar mass of the salt that it came from is 106 grams per mole. So I'm going to jot that down too. And that's, that's with the sodium, that's okay. Well, I can see in there two ways to calculate a couple of things. Um, I've already been given my concentration here. So actually that's, that's excellent. Because if I was to write a Ka expression, it asks me for concentration. So... I already know this. I'm going to try to calculate this one's concentration to give me the pH. That's what the question is asking. So the only concentration I'm really missing is my carbonate. So how can I do that with the information I've got? Well, I've got a mass and I've got a molar mass. From that, I can find the amount. So let's do that first. From this one here, I can go N equals little m over big M, or what an R if you prefer so you can tell the difference. And I've got that, 1 divided by 106. 
and everything's three significant figures, so I'll do that. And I get 9.43 times 10 to the negative 3. Moles. Once I've got an amount, if I have a look in my information, I've also got a volume. This was dissolved in 250 mils. So if I've got an amount and I've got a volume, I can calculate the concentration. C equals N over V. I'm sorry, I'm just going to flip the boards over here. Hopefully you can still see enough of it. So C equals N over V. Well, my amount, according to that, was 9.43 times 10 to negative 3. And my volume was 250 mils, which is the same as 0 0.250 litres. As I said in the start, you might have wanted to convert them. Okay, so now I've got my new concentration of this. is 0 0.0376 seven, three, five, so it's to three significant figures, it is 0 0.0377 moles per litre. So now, I'm going to transfer that back to the other one. And that's going to be the one that I'm going to use. Okay, so now, We've had to do a bit of working before we can actually work anything out. Now it's time to write our Ka expression from our equation because we've got all the information we need. We've got three, con sorry, two concentrations and one unknown concentration. So the Ka for what we had before is equal to H3O plus times carbonate over hydrogen carbonate. And I know a lot of these values. So it's not wonderfully correct mathematically the way I'm going to do this, but bear with me. 10 to the power of negative 10.3. So that was given because our pKa was 10.3. Equals, we don't know hydronium yet, so I'm going to leave that like that. Times... Well, I now know this carbonate because the 1 gram and the 250 mils is equal to 0 0.0377 moles per litre. Divided by, I was given this one in the question, 0 0.250. And so now all I have to do is rearrange this equation to make hydronium the subject. So hydronium is going to be... 10 to the negative 10.3 times 0 0.250 divided by 0 0.0377. Um, so, if you're not sure how to do that mathematically, maybe do it one step at a time and then see how we work it out. So, I'll do that quickly now. I've got 3.32 times 10 to the negative 10 moles per litre. Then it's just a case of going from this to pH. So now you've probably seen why these are often excellent questions. There's so many steps in it. It's just remembering what to do. So now I use my little equation where pH equals negative log base 10. So that's the log that will be on your calculator because then we'll set up at base 10 of hydronium. So just plug that number in. And I get 9.48. Now, a general rule of thumb is that a buffer only works within plus or minus one of its pKa. That's why we have pKa values. If I go back to my original question, P 
keeping in mind the answer was 9.48, we can actually say a little bit about this buffer. Okay? So we found the answer was 9.48. This value is within one of 10.3, so it probably will be quite an effective buffer against both acids and bases. But because this value is lower than 10.3, do we think it would be more effective against addition of acid or against addition of base? Addition of base, because it's more likely to act as an acid? Good. Okay. So more of the acids there in a higher concentration, the conjugate acid is there in a higher concentration of the conjugate base, so therefore it's going to be more effective working against an acid. Now in your blood, the ratio between these two is even greater. It actually doesn't work as, a, as an effective buffer against bases at all. It only works as a good buffer against acids because it's trying to keep the pH of your blood down somewhere around about 7. It's not exactly 7, I'm sorry, I can't remember the value off the top of my head. Um, so, it's, yeah, it's 7 point something. Um, so, it's not very effective against addition of alkaline in your blood at all, but it's very effective against the addition of acid to your blood, which is good because you're more exposed to, to acids through foods and so on than you are to, to bases, soluble bases. So, just as a summary, when you see a question like this, my suggestion is to write the equation for the acid dissociation first. Second, jot down everything you know about the acid and the conjugate base and maybe the hydronium, because you might know the pH. Because if you know the pH, you can work out this value. Okay, so you might be proving that the pH is such and such. Okay. So write down everything you know about those. If one of them isn't a concentration, calculate it to be a concentration. Then write the Ka expression like we did here. Plug in what you know, solve for whatever is unknown, and then follow up with the last of your calculations to either determine the pH or prove the pH is what they say it is or has to be. All right. Then you might be asked to discuss the effectiveness of this acid. If the pH is lower than the pKa, it's more effective at neutralising the effect of a base than it is at neutralising the effect of an acid. Conversely, if the pH is above the pKa, it's more effective at neutralising the effect of, an, of a base than it is against an acid. 